In this how to svelte, we're going to design a web page using full page tabs. So it's essentially like having four web pages in one. And on W3 Schools, you can go there and look for their how to section and look up full page tabs. And they just have a very simple example here. But what we'll do is we'll take, th take this example and we'll try to fill these out a little bit more like full web pages. So, you know, here's the home page a news page, a contact page, an about page. So we'll fill this out and we'll look into this Svelte element called Svelte component. And just with this one line of code, we'll be able to load each of these very quickly into one single page. Let's go back to the how to section. And what we'll do is we'll copy and paste this over to a blank Svelte REPL. So I'll copy the HTML and CSS and take it on over there. What we're going to first do is we're going to make some components and we'll make components that match each of these labels here. So I'll go ahead and start doing that now. And I'll go ahead and move over this HTML to each relevant component here. So here's the home div. Then I'll move the CSS over. So we're just looking for the class tab content. And I'm going to change the text color to black and the display to block. And I'll copy this over to the other components. And then I'll go ahead and import each of these components into the app component. And then I'll go ahead and get rid of these CSS rules for background color. So now we have tab link and tab link hover, and those correspond to these buttons here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use these buttons, but we're going to actually build them from an array instead of hard coding them each like this. And the reason we're going to do that is because it will help us to build these other components. When we click on the button, we'll be able to see the whole news component, and we'll use this array that we're going to create. And each web page will be represented by an object. And the first property is just a generic uh, name property. So we know this is the home page, but it's actually the second property here that we'll call component that will be most important to us. We'll give a value for this component to be just like the naming of this felt component. Now the temptation is to make it a string like this, but we don't want it to be a string. We want it to represent the name of the class or the name of the component. So we'll go ahead and make those for the others as well. And so what we'll do is we'll use this array to create these buttons. So we'll set up a Svelte each loop. I'm going to call this web page object so we know that what's what the value is this value actually is an object. And so we'll use this button as a template. Right now we have home as the text content. Let's re replace that with some svelte curly braces and then we'll do web page dot name. And then to handle this on click, let's change it over to svelte syntax. And for now, what we'll do is we'll just console log webpage.name. Or, you know, what we'll do is we'll console log the whole object. Let's take a look at the whole object. And so if I open up the console, I click News, you can see what comes back as an object. We can see the name property. We can see the component 
property and look at its value here, class news page. And so this is exactly why in our web pages array, we're using this without, it's not a string, it's the name of this class. And so it's imperative that we make it look the exact same way. And so this should match this because it's the name of the class, the name of the component. Okay, those look like they're working. So when we click on these, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to capture which object we've clicked on. So let's go ahead and make another variable and we'll call this selected page. And I'll hard code this first object here by doing web pages zero. So basically when we click on this button, what we'll do is we'll call a function that will set the value of selected page. So instead of console logging here, let's go ahead and create that function. And we'll call that event handler function load page. And we'll create that here. And load page will take one parameter. It's gonna take an object. And we're gonna do an object because that's what these each of these values represents. And luckily, when we loop through the web pages, this web page object is the object which we'll actually provide as the argument. So on click, we'll call low page and we'll pass web page object in. And then once inside here, the code block, we're gonna set selected page to be the value of object. So that whatever's passed in here as an argument, that'll be what selected page gets set to. Let's go ahead and just make this in one line too. That'll clean that up. We'll make a reactive console log so we can see selected page. And this may not be able to show in this console. Let's try it. Yeah, so we'll, let's open up Chrome DevTools console. And so I'll click on contact. Okay, I'll click on news. Yeah, good. So the correct value is being stored in selected page. Now we need to add a Svelte element called Svelte component. And there is a this attribute. And this is basically saying that we'll load this Svelte component in here if whatever's inside these curly braces evaluates to true. And so what we want to evaluate the true here is select it page dot component. And so this component part here is what this is what we defined up here as a property, as a key. And so selected page, remember when we click on news, then selected page represents or is pointing to this whole object, news and news page. And so now with this, this equals selected dot component, we're saying go ahead and load the news page component in. And that's why it shows up down here. I just clicked contact, selected page, then gets assigned to this object. And then using this logic here, this component will be selected page dot component. So it comes here, it sees, oh, contact page. And it knows we've got a component here named contact page. So it literally comes over here and loads this component in. And so this Svelte element, this Svelte component element, allows us to render a component dynamically. This must be a truthy value. If this is a false value or a falsy value, then the component won't render here. And so select it page.component comes up here and says, oh, yep, there is a home page. So I'll, I'll go ahead and load this component. Now, that is how we've got the functionality working. The next thing to do is let's just go ahead and fill these in with some actual more substantial uh, web page data. So what you could do is you can come over to W3 Schools and let's say for our home page, we'll come down to make a website. And so we can go ahead and copy the HTML and CSS for make a website. And then let's say for our contact, we can come back over to W3 Schools and look, here's a contact section. So we can go ahead and copy and paste the HTML for this and just paste it into 
our project here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly. Okay, good. So I have pasted all of the HTML and CSS from those W3 school how-to pages. We have substantial more content now. So this single page app could actually hold quite a bit and just have this nice organized section based on these tab headers. And if you look at each of these components, you can see their presentational components. There are no script tags. There's just this, the HTML you want to include and any CSS that is related to that. And so we have four presentational components here. And then the logic is all up inside the app component. We're using our web pages array to build the buttons out, but we're also using our web pages array to load the component down here. And we're using the Svelte component element to do that. And that's how you can make a nice organized website using full page tabs using Svelte.